Whether you're a company that assembles parts to provide a finished product to the market, or you're a reseller of finished goods, inventory is involved. While some might view inventory as just items sitting on the shelf, I invite you to think about it in a different way. How you manage your inventory can have a huge impact on your business because inventory management is very closely tied to cash flow management. Precious cash was used to buy inventory, and until the inventory sells, the items on the shelf are cash locked away that a business can't touch. Therefore, how you handle inventory is very important and several key metrics will help you begin a journey into the successful management of inventory. Hello, I'm Tracy Smith, the president of Numerical Insights. This video is a continuation of my series on how to use data to transform and manage your business. Every company that carries inventory wants to have enough of it to be able to fill customers' orders, but have a minimum amount of cash tied up on the shelf. Unfortunately, one half of that statement wants you to stock more of each item, and the other half wants you to stock less of each item. To balance out these conflicting goals, you need just the right amount. The challenge, of course, is in determining what just the right amount is, because conditions constantly change. Inventory management is not a one-time activity. It's an ongoing process of monitoring changes in sales volume patterns, trends, seasonality, changes in consumer preferences, price changes, supplier performance, and sometimes commodity price indices. If you're an established global business, there are probably dozens of metrics that you follow in procurement and supply chain, and you likely have dozens of procurement professionals on staff. If you're a smaller company, you're lucky if you have one full-time professional running your procurement and inventory management. For that reason, smaller companies need to start with a focus on just a few key metrics. Here are five metrics that you may find useful. The sales rate is a really simple metric that calculates, on average, how many of each item you sell each day. To calculate this metric, you'll first need to decide how long of a time period you want to use for this measurement. For example, if you decide to use sales for the last 30 days, the sales rate for each item will be the quantity sold during those 30 days divided by 30. If I sell 600 bottles of orange juice in 30 days, then my sales rate for orange juice is 600 divided by 30, or 20 bottles of juice per day. Sales rates, however, are never constant, since the number of each item you sell will vary day by day. So I like to have a dashboard calculate sales rates for the last 30 days. What I normally create is something like the image on the screen, which is a dashboard where the sales data is updated every day. I also like to see how this metric trends over time to gain insights into seasonality and changing customer preferences for every product. You may notice that this dashboard also has a metric called DSI. I'll talk about that metric next. How many days of inventory do you have for each product? When will you run out of inventory? How many days does it take to sell through your inventory? These three questions are essentially the same thing. The calculation of DSI, or days sales inventory, for each product is based on the sales rates that we calculated for our first metric. In the example I used previously, we know that we sell orange juice at a rate of 20 bottles per day. If we currently have 95 bottles available in our inventory, then we have 95 divided by 20, or 4.75 days worth of inventory. If we don't add to our inventory stock, we anticipate running out of orange juice to sell in just under five days. The DSI metric helps you plan the date by which you need to buy or build more finished goods inventory. Precious cash is tied up in inventory and the only way to free up that cash is to sell products to customers. For proper inventory management, we want to ensure that we are not tying up an increasing amount of cash in inventory. For this reason, I like to track the total dollars invested in inventory or the cost of inventory. To do this, we take the cost of each item and multiply that by the quantity of each item we have in stock. If you buy finished goods to resell, then the cost of each item is the price you paid to your supplier for these items. 
If you're a manufacturer of products, then the cost of finished goods in your inventory is based on the cost of the raw materials used to make that product in addition to direct labor. The cost of inventory is a metric that I like to add to client dashboards and automate so there's no manual calculations every month. The percent of line items shipped complete measures a portion of the customer experience. How often do customers receive all of what they ordered when they expected it? This metric can be broken down per item to determine whether there is a subset of items that are hampering your inventory management success and impacting your customer satisfaction. To provide an example of this metric, suppose customer number one orders six pumps and five hoses. You have two pumps and 10 hoses in stock. You can meet the customer's order for hoses, but you can only ship two pumps to them. Of the two line items on the purchase order, only one line item is shipped complete. Your percent of line items complete on this order is 50%. This calculation is expanded to include all line items on all orders within a chosen time period. There's just one thing to watch out for on this metric. Suppose customer number two comes along and also orders pumps. When you have new pumps available to ship out, this metric will have an unintended consequence of making customer number one wait even longer because maximizing this metric means that employees being measured by this metric will want to send the pumps to customer number two. That creates a customer service issue since customer number one will be kept waiting for the rest of his order even longer. You may wish to add a rule that whoever ordered first gets the product first when it finally becomes available. This isn't a metric, but rather a chart measuring supplier performance in terms of delivery variation. A histogram chart can be created for each supplier, showing the range of delivery times you are experiencing with each one. How many times in the last year have they delivered product to you in 5 days, 10 days, 12 days? This chart counts the number of times the supplier delivered product to you in a specific length of time. The overall chart lets you see what range of delivery times you can expect to see from your suppliers. A reference line should be drawn at the delivery time that was promised in a supplier's contract to see how they perform against their promise. In smaller companies, supplier contracts may not exist, but you can create reference lines based on verbal promises. The key point here is that you want to see whether the delivery performance you are receiving is working well enough for you to fill customer orders most of the time, i.e. within your defined customer service levels. You can view my YouTube video called How to Measure Supplier Delivery Performance for a full explanation of this measurement. As with many impactful data projects, you may find that the data required for these metrics is stored in different data systems or different tables within a database. Much of the work to produce the suggested metrics is in getting the data in a form that can be analyzed. That's step one. Step two is the creation of dashboards and data visualizations to make it easy for people to use the charts and tables created. Establishing a real-time data connection, or at least a frequent refresh of sales and inventory data to keep an inventory dashboard up to date, is preferable. This has multiple benefits. It eliminates having to repeatedly perform manual calculations, which are prone to error. And faster access to information can speed up decision making. The final challenge for inventory management is in learning how to interpret the dashboard information for practical business use. It is valuable to have someone who has a broad understanding of business decisions and data analysis to help maximize the value of the dashboard tools created. They can help you determine how to make decisions based on the numbers and charts presented. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to press like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive a message when new videos are released. You can also explore the other videos in this series or visit our website for more information on how to use data analysis to improve your business.